Hey, Latte Lovers, Mark here from Whole Latte Love. Have Missy with me today. Missy, well, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. We are going to unbox and start up a Profitec Go espresso machine. It's a single boiler, dual, dual use machine. We have another one here, just in the interest of time, all warmed up and ready to go. So we'll be able to make a latte, pull some shots. Uh, we'll talk about some of the maintenance products and yeah. stuff that you might want to have. Uh, if you have one of these machines, we'll go over those and show you how to get it set up and use it. So let's unbox this awesome. thing. Now, I already cut the top open here. Uh, Missy, I'll hand you the little you. accessory box here and maybe you can Thank start you. pulling that stuff out of there and show us what we got. Side. Okay. So we have our user manual. We've got a little bit of more information here. This is kind of your quick, your quick start sheet. The drip tray, which you'll notice has this coating on it. This is like a laser film that you can peel off. We're not going to peel that off right just yet. Uh, it just protects the machine, or protects it from scratches. Right? Yeah, in it protects it stuff. in transit yeah. from getting scratched. Okay. Here, I'm going to move the box. How about that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's always fun. And heavy duty foam here. And then there's the porta filter. The, it's a dual spout porta filter that it comes with. It's got a double shot basket already in there. You've got your back flush disc and a single shot basket, a tamper, and your group cleaning brush. All good stuff. Yes. Okay, uh, so let's talk a little bit. Oh, we'll take this off here and a little decoration, what have you. Um, so the first thing we're going to want to do, right, is get some water in here. Yeah, we're going to get some turn it water on. in the machine before we turn it on. Exactly. But let's talk about water quality for a minute, right? Because that's probably one of the most important maintenance items or requirements is putting good water in a machine, treating it so we don't get exactly. scale in scale the machine. Scale buildup. Um, number one killer of espresso machines is scale buildup. So you yeah. want to make sure that you are using anti-scale filtration. Mm -hmm. um, which is slightly different than like a Brita filter because uh, when you use a Brita filter, that's more getting it for if you're going to drink it at room temperature or cold. Anti-scale filters are going to be filtering for that water getting boiled and having sediments build up. Yeah, cal calcium. So uh, a couple of options here. Uh, well, three actually from BWT. So. We have their BWT Best Save pad filters. So mm -hmm. these look like it's a little sachet. Little sachet. Yeah, <laughs> that you put in there, kind of like right a in little there. bean bag or something. And that is going to exchange magnesium for calcium, so you mm -hmm. won't get scale if you use this as directed. Um, and there, it does take a little time for us to yeah, do its work. It so takes eight hours to activate. So if you're using these ones, you just want to fill your water tank up the night before. Yeah. Um, before use. Yeah. And if you're the type that's going to go through a full reservoir in a day, this probably isn't the best choice. Yeah. Um, another option is, and I have the latest version of the BWT pitcher here. This is called the Aqualizer. Mm -hmm. So it's got a filter in here um, that does the same thing. It's going to remove calcium and, and put magnesium in the water. So you exactly. get the minerals you want for good flavor, mm -hmm. um, but not minerals that are going to cause scale in your machine. Yes. Um, another option here, so I'll move this out of the way, this is what we're going to end up using, um, is the BWT Best Cup here. Best Cup. This one's basically turning your reservoir into a pitcher, so it's going to filter it instantly, and then you've got the cartridge there. And, and this little, little mount here. And yeah. I'll show you how this works real Woo! quick we don't drop things. Yeah. So what you do is this little tube right here is going to connect in, if you can see in here, onto the little nipple in there. There it is. There it is. So it'll connect to that. And then it's got a little suction cup here that'll hold it in the reservoir. And then this filter just mounts into here. So all the water is filtered immediately. So you yeah. put as much water through this as you want to. Mm -hmm. So that's another option. This, this is an option I really like. You know, mm -hmm. this, the pitcher makes great tasting water. Um, as well, so if you have the pitcher, you keep it in your fridge. You can also use it as drinking it. water. Now, well, how often are we replacing any of these? So there's going to be. Uh, it's usually about. <laughs> 
This has, will be rated for, and I think, you know, if you read right on there, couple it's months. like, yeah, yeah. Couple, every two months or every so. Two months. Um, the newest BWT pitcher will let you know oh, cool. by use when Very to replace nice. it. Um, and let's see, the best cup, I think there's a rating on here as well for, Probably for two liters. Probably yeah. 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 So usually, usually they have some number of liters mark there. Um, oh, another okay. thing you would, should probably do before you use the reservoir, we're not going to do it right now, just in the interest of time, is rinse this out mm -hmm. before you use it. But we'll put that in there. Make sure it's fully mounted in there. And then we're just going to fill it with some water. And then we're going to go through a fill procedure on the machine. It's just mm -hmm. on the first time you start it up on this machine because it make, wants to make sure that the boiler ha is full of water before you actually start heating anything in the boiler. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put the drip tray in. Yeah. Um, you'll notice this has the two lines kind of showing you where to put the drip tray. A little more water in So there. this back hole um, is positioned correctly. And I, of course, did plug the machine in back here. All right, so we hit the power button? Yeah, let's okay. do it. So it's right here. And that's like the version number of the software from the first goes, and now it's saying? Fill. Um, so it's telling us that we need to fill the boiler. Yeah. Um, so what we're going to do is hit this brew button to turn the pump on. Because we're just using this for the very first time, we need to fill the boiler. And we see, let's see, do we have, oh yes. We do have the counter going over here, right on the, oh, let me turn this just a little bit. So this has to run for a minimum of 30 seconds. Oh, and this valve was open, so keep an eye out for that. Towel. There we go. I think when I took the little uh, protector off of there, I might have turned ah. that a little bit. Okay. That was just water, so, but once mm -hmm. we're 29. at 30 seconds, okay. at least, okay. Now it says up. It is going to heat up. Okay. And the heat up time on this, now we want to have our port filter in there while it's heating up so that it gets, uh, yes, it gets warmed up. Heat up time on it is about five to ten minutes. Yeah, so generally you're going to, you know, obviously want to turn the machine on beforehand and mm -hmm. it's still telling us up that it's heating up. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty much the startup. Yeah, that's, that's your startup. Um, we can go through on the machine that we've got set yeah. up with some of the basic functions there. Yeah. So let's take a look at that. Yeah. Um, so obviously this is the on and off button. And then here is our button to put the machine into steaming mode. If I press this, this is going to start to raise the temperature of the boiler. It'll say ST for steam. And that'll raise the temperature of the boiler um, we have it set to 285 right now for our steam temperature. This is our brew button. So you press that and that's going to start brewing. Um, and then obviously this is our steam and hot water knob. Mm -hmm. Let's see what else there is. Obviously the PID menu. So if I press and hold this, we have some different functions Steam temperature. In there. Eco. Eco mode settings. Clean. And then if it ever, um, when you press that, it goes out of that menu pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. So So this is T1, we'd set our brew temperature. Brew temperature. Right? ST would be setting our steam temperature. Eco mode for having it go into like a standby after a certain amount of time. Clean would be our clean reminder. Yeah. And then the little circle is if you just got the machine and you want to change it to Fahrenheit, then you would or just... Celsius or Celsius. Or Celsius. And ours came in, in Fahrenheit every once in a while. That yeah. We see them come in Celsius, but it's super easy to change. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll just note, you know, we had this machine running at about 201 and you hit the steam on, so yeah. it started to increase the exactly. temperature of the boiler a little mm -hmm. bit. And, you know, you, you set that steam temperature based on your frothing skills and ability. Yeah. Because um, this thing <laughs> makes it's a fair powerful. amount of steam, yeah. um, so you can change the temperature to change the pressure that you're going to get out of here. So if exactly. you want more time to work for your milk, you'd you know, maybe run that closer to 240-ish yeah, or something. Yeah, 240. 
Um, um, and it just depends what, how long you prefer to steam your milk if you need a little more time to perfect that latte or technique. Yeah. Um, and it is a single boiler, dual use machine, mm -hmm. which means you either brew or steam. You yeah. can't do both at the same time. Correct. Um, so yeah, after you like make your, and you can choose to do whichever you like mm -hmm. first. Um, and everybody's a little different. Yeah, everybody's different. I prefer to brew first, but technically, Specialty Coffee Association says espresso shouldn't sit for 90 seconds. Um, so you can steam first if you want to, and then brew. You want to do a cooling flush mm -hmm. and make sure you're at a good temperature, but yeah. And yeah, like you said, this is a PID machine, so you get very accurate brew temperatures. Mm -hmm. So if you're working with higher end specialty, single origin coffees, you want to mm -hmm. be very particular about the flavors you're going to get from those. You can set that up real easily. Yeah. But um, so, it, and as you can see, as we came out of the steam, you know, we could do a little flush from the group to help bring that temperature down, but it's, it's kind of right back to where we want it. Um, we also do have the brew pressure gauge over there. I'm not yes, sure we, we covered yep. that. I'll tell and you where then, you are. Um, this particular edition was the limited that has the teal. Um, now we have the blue, the light blue on the machine that we yep. had just opened. So that's what you'll see in case you're wondering <laughs> about that difference there. Um, also up top, if we can get a shot up top here, you do have the cup warming surface that we have up here. Um, so that's going to get passively heated by the boiler. And then if you look right here, here's a brew pressure adjustment. That's what that is. Mm -hmm. um, so the back flush disc that we got with the machine, you put that into your porta filter, and then you could turn this to adjust your brew pressure, you know, to whatever you'd like. You know, nine bars, kind of like mm -hmm. the standard, but there's other reasons why you might do 10 or six or seven or, you now, know, different things. What kind of reasons might somebody want to adjust their brew pressure? You know, you might want to try a coffee with a, with a, just a lower pressure brewing. Yeah. Um, I know, you know, like a lot of the darker roasts, sometimes people want a little higher. Yeah, <laughs> so okay. It, yeah. it all depends. And, you know, what you can do is just try, hey, let me try this coffee at 10. Let me try it at 7 bar and see what happens. So just experimenting you know? with flavors. Yeah. You can re and cool. between that and temperature, you can do all kinds of manipulation. Very but cool. uh, let's see. Should we just pull a shot here? Let's do it. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm going to use this pour filter in machine since it's nice and heated up. Mm -hmm. And then... A little towel um, to wipe that out? If oh, thank you. Yeah. I'm going to dry this out so we don't have any ground sticking to the inside of the wet basket. Now, we do have a scale here. We have an Akaya scale. And if you're into higher end brewing, or really, you know, if you're really... You should just probably use a scale. Yeah. You want to use a scale. It doesn't have to be this scale, but this is definitely yeah. um, the best espresso scale on the market, in my opinion, at least. Mm -hmm. um, and then this little mat that it comes with Mark has a trick That's where you my little flip trick. it up, because <laughs> it'll usually just be like this, but you yeah. can flip it up and, and have the portafilter sit on it like that. Yep. Um, so and I'm going to brew out, let's oh tear, yeah, let's tear it, that out. that's <laughs> always important. I'm going to hit the tear button, and then I'm going to get, I think we have this already set to 16 grams. Yeah, about 16. And you've got a little dosing funnel here, this uh, little, to help keep the grinds all in the porta mm -hmm. filter. It does a pretty good job distributing, but this just keeps the counters cleaner. Yeah, and I think I... Wait it without that? W wait it without it, so yeah. So it's at 14.2, 14 so you can two. just, you know, maybe give it a... Give a little punch, and then, oop, yep. let me get off. There we go. There we go. Made a big mess for yeah. us, but that's all right. Okay, 16.1, perfect. That's great. And then, oh, the machine did come with a tamper. You've got the little yep. tamping mat here. I'm going to just kind of level this out. I might give it a little basic little knock. It's going to trigger some baristas right there, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I see that actually becoming more popular, just a little to level it out. Yeah, and then I'm doing a nice even tamp, um, just kind of making sure that I'm pressing it so I'm getting a level tamp. Okay, and I'm locking the porta filter in. These little tabs are what's keeping it there, so you want to make sure those are lined up. Now, when you just get your machine, this might not be perfectly at 6 o'clock mm -hmm. because the uh, rubber group gasket in there is brand new. So you can um, experience it kind of going more here. Yeah. That's totally normal. That's going to wear in over time. Yeah, that's definitely going to break in and it's nothing wrong with the machine. It's going to exactly. work just fine. And we're going to weigh the extraction as well, right? Yes, we are. Now, I will do... You gonna go right into the. Uh, let's do the. Let's see the. Let's coffee. see the yeah. shot. Here's it. Oh. The little shot picture here. They're very helpful. 
um, when measuring uh, your espresso. Uh, just so you know, milliliters don't don't equal weight. Yeah. <laughs> they do if it's absolutely pure water. Right. But we're making espresso. Let me just angle this so you can see it here. Yep. Okay. So we are brewing. So our I'm shot watching, timer here. Yeah, so I'm aiming for double the amount, so 32 grams in 20 to 30 seconds. I can see right now we're at about 13, 14. Mm-hmm. 22, sis. This is looking great. Awesome. Yeah. Yep, 23 seconds. Got just a little over 32 grams. And you can see all the crema this coffee made. It happens to be our crema wave coffee. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards, I usually just <coughs> knock the puck out Ooh. Mm -hmm. and then give this a little rinse. That's always convenient way to just keep things clean and tidy. And then I'm going to put this into steam mode. Okay. Again, if you have any questions and you're watching us during the live stream, you can chat in with those. We'll take those along the way. Okay. So we can see it's gone in, into steam mode. We can see the temperature increasing here. Mm -hmm. um, and you don't have to wait to actually hit the temperature uh, that you, y you know, you set it to because mm -hmm. it's going to continue to heat, mm -hmm. continue generating steam. Like when I'm using this machine, I'm, you know, I'm usually when I'm into the 240s, I'm, I'm good for steaming. Cool. But let me, uh, you're, sure. you're going to froth for us, right? Okay. So I'll get you the milk and I'll switch sides with you here so you have access. All and then right. we'll show you the little, you know, little things that you need to do when steaming, like purging a wand before and after. And then we can check in and see how our new machine is doing yeah. once we do this. I'm going to purge the wand. It's helpful to do it into the drip and tray, less messy. Or you can do another cup. I yeah. brought that over just in case you want to use that. Pretty Even common. less messy with another cup. And I just do that until I see, I don't see water streaming out, I'm seeing dry steam. Okay. We go overhead. It's all about the tip position here, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just going to put this uh, steam tip in up until about that little line. You're not putting it in super deep there. And you're angling it so that, um, so that it's pushing the milk kind of in a circle, if that makes sense. Getting a swirl in Getting there. Getting a swirl. And I'm just going to open it up all the way and pull the pitcher down as I'm doing it. I'm trying to get that little pss, pss, pss noise that you might use to call a cat. <laughs> little sips of air into yeah. the milk, and then you're breaking up those bubbles. And then the temperature you're going to, right? Yeah, I mean, you can do it by yeah. feel. You could use a thermometer if you want. I do it by feel because this is, woo, this is nice and hot now. And then I'm always wiping this down as soon as I can to avoid any kind of milk crusting on there. And then I give it a purge. Yeah. Cool. And then, so should we pour? Then there's a Let's one more little it. step we should do, right? Okay. Which is just to cool down the boiler afterwards yes. and get our steam off. Should I do that first or second? Uh, let's do that second. Let's okay. do the pour here. I'm going to just turn the steam off for now. So okay. when you're done steaming, just hit that steam switch. And then I'm going to knock my pitcher, give it a little swirl, break up any big bubbles. We'll see if I can get a heart for us. We've got a lot of great videos um, on our channels. Go to whole I love go to the YouTube channel that'll show you, you know, get get you into uh, mm. frothing and right into latte art. Just a big art. blob today, but that's all right. There you go. Would you like a blob? I would like it. Thanks for the blob. <laughs> you know, regardless, you know, whether you get the art or not, I always say it's still going to taste great. There we go. And that's part of the challenge, you know, mm -hmm. right? When you nail, nail a really good piece of art yeah. on your blob, and then you get to drink it. I know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I'm going to do my cooling flush. I'm just removing the portafilter, mm -hmm. putting something underneath there. And then press and brew. You see that steam come out. Yeah. Uh, we're letting all that steam out until we see water start to drip down. Right? So we're starting to see that. And it's going to give us our shot timer while it's going. But once we go back down, once we stop brewing, uh, then it'll start to display the temperature again after a little bit. So yeah. 
Yeah. So it all cooled down or well below, well below, but that'll yeah. pop right back up to our exactly. brew temperature. It doesn't take long at all. Yeah, and I could have stopped brewing earlier too. And now I know, so we have the other machine over here set up and it's it's doing something. Because the uh, Prof. Go does have a special function, mm -hmm. uh, which is the quick heat up time. The quick heat up time. Say so, that a bunch of times. <laughs> yeah. So it, it, it heats the boiler very quickly. I mean, if we say about five to ten minutes, but now it's telling us to do a little flush. Yeah, that heated up quicker than five to ten minutes, I yeah. would say. Um, so it's saying FLU for flush. I'm going to put this over yeah. here, too. Yeah, we got enough room in there, I think. And then I'm just going to do a little flush. Okay. And that's because of that quick heat up. Mm -hmm. It's also, it could help. You could leave the portafilter right in there and help that heat if you wanted yeah, you to. Could. Um, to get some hot water through that, that's one of the little tricks for getting your equipment heated up quicker. Is to it's called a blank shot usually, mm -hmm. um, just running something through the porta filter. And, and now I'm going to guess that this is set to Celsius. Yes, this definitely this one is set to Celsius. So why don't we could change it pretty easy, right? Let's do it. Okay, I'll, you want me to grab it? Okay. Do it. And so it's just through till I see the little degree symbol and plus F, and there we go. One, two, now it'll show us a Fahrenheit temperature. And look, we're, you know, we mm -hmm. put a bunch of cool water through there. Um, honestly, I don't even know what our brew temperature was set to because we never did, right? Yeah, Oops, this first time using far. it. <laughs> so if you go too far, you just got to hit again, like say, oh, we're set to 200. 200, okay. yeah. And that's a pretty good place to set it. Why that's might we want to change it? Um, if we were going to do so like lighter roast coffee, it generally, the, I mean, the general espresso brewing range is 195 to 205. Lighter roast, you generally brew hotter. Darker roast, generally colder. Medium roast, 200. Hey, yeah. we're right in the middle, right? Yeah. Um, but let's talk about some of the other, you know, we got a couple other things here that we want to talk about. Um, it's, you know, like maintaining your machine. So I've got yeah. Kafiza here. Kafiza. Um, Ernex Kafiza, this is what is used in a lot of cafes. It is a back flush detergent. Um, so this is going to clean the coffee oils out of our porta filter and our brew group. Um, you can use them to clean the baskets as well. Mm -hmm. um, and you've got the back flush disc here. Yep, it includes a back flush disc, which is just a blank porta filter basket with no holes. Um, and what you would do, yeah. and I love this little, this is called, this is a scoops brush also yeah, made I've got by one at home. <laughs> Um And it makes it real easy to measure that out. So what you do is, again, you'd, you know, like you said, you'd put this into your porta filter. Just put, put that, that in, in there. there. Makes it super easy. Yeah, ideally you probably want to change your basket out when it's not super hot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but then, do we demonstrate or? Um, I don't think we need to go that okay. far. I mean, basically what you do is you just you just do that. Oh, let me show you the little trick though. Oh, sure. So if you're new to espresso, the little trick with porta filters is to take another filter basket, wedge it under here. Now there are tools for this that can make it even easier, but this is really yeah. straightforward. So you take that and like, you know, we already, you generally wouldn't put your stuff in there <laughs> until First, now. First, yeah. But get that in, that is nice and warm. So then you just lock this guy in, run the machine for 20 seconds, mm -hmm. stop it for 20 seconds, and then repeat that, repeat the process you know, four or five, five times. Yeah. Um, that takes port the port filter out. In. Yeah. And then you repeat with just water. And then, yeah, you go with water until, you know, everything's nice and clean. Mm -hmm. And then that brush also can get up in the group here. So yeah. you can use this to scrub out the group. Exactly. Up in here mm -hmm. as well. Um, and we say generally it's like somewhere between, you know, 110, 150 brew cycles mm -hmm. you want to use the detergent. Yeah. And then also you also, can. Also, yeah, once a week it's just good practice to um, put your back flush disc in and just rinse that out. Um, yeah. It's certainly only going to help and not going to harm anything. So, yeah, once a week you can rinse with just water. Um, and obviously, knock your puck out, rinse your uh, porta filter baskets, and wipe that shower screen down as well. Yeah, because those coffee oils, you know, they, they're going to accumulate eventually. They're going to go rancid and, and affect your rancid. flavor. Yeah. So, um, clean coffee is only going to, or clean machine is only going to make better tasting coffee. And one other thing, you know, it's very important, like you said, to wipe down your steam wand right yes. after steaming and purge mm -hmm. it right after steaming. We do have some Rinza here. You know, maybe tell us how we would use yeah, that. Yeah, um, so if I had my pitcher, mm -hmm. I would grab the pitcher and then the Rinza come in little tablets, look like this. And then you would uh, just put the tablet right in the pitcher, mm -hmm. fill this up with water, steam that until it's nice and hot, dump that out and repeat the process with just water. Um, and that's 
formulated to break down milk proteins. Mm -hmm. And on all of these products, the instructions are right on there. Um, so that's really helpful too. And I'll tell you, just so you know, you know, the, something like Kefiza, I mean, this is probably for the average user, well over a year's supply. Oh yeah, right? yeah, because I for think this. they sell them in more like cafe quantities or something. They're, yeah. It's a lot, um, so I bought mine a few years ago and still have it. Still have the same yeah. one? Mm -hmm. And yeah, you're pretty aggressive with your espresso yeah. at home. So. Mm -hmm. um, so that I think that I think we pretty much covered everything. Um, if we have any questions, we can take those. Sure, shoot. What do we got back there? Hi, right, we have a couple of questions. First question is: Are the buttons on the machine plastic or metal? Oh, great question. Yeah. That is. Um, so over here, I'm gonna press this so things might happen. But mm -hmm. when I press this button, there is they're metal, and there's a click. Um, yeah. And then when I unpress it, there's you know, there's a click as well. I think it just when I press it, there's a click and then it releases. Yeah. yeah. Um, so. But they're heavy duty. I mean. Yeah, it's, they're it's heavy duty, and I know there is a kind of a another machine sort of in this segment that's got similar buttons that are they look metal but they feel plastic. These feel metal. Yeah. They click in very high quality. Yeah. So. Anything else, Erica? Yeah. Oh, okay. Shoot, guys. Uh, next question is, is this machine plumbable? No, uh, it is not. No. It has a vibratory <laughs> pump, um, and it is reservoir only. Yeah. Uh, so anytime something's got a vibratory pump, it's going to be reservoir only. If it has a rotary pump, then it's plumbable. Pretty much all the machines that we have with rotary pumps have both a reservoir and the tank, and you can switch yeah. those, but this one's just... Uh, reservoir only. In fact, come back at 3 o'clock, and we'll be taking a look <laughs> at the ECM Synchronico, which is a rotary pump. Plumbable, plumbable machine. machine. It's a dual boiler. I mean, it's going to be quite a different price than this guy. Yeah. Uh, but really nice machine. So if you want to check that out, and uh, yeah, plumbing machine is wonderful. Mm -hmm. But yeah, any any more, Erica? No. Okay. Well, look, I th I think that that kind of covers the initial startup. We do have uh, down in the description for this. Um, you can continue to ask questions in the yeah. comments there. Um, we'll, we'll take a look at those. And down in the description, we have links to some of the. Uh, care products and also yep. to our support site. Yeah. Oh, that's the coffee we're this using. This is a great coffee to use with the machine if you got it for the first time. Uh, really e easy to work with. Espresso. We also have some single origins. Um, you want to get fancy? We've got the yeah. single origins from Ethiopia, Guatemala. I've got some of this at home right now that I'm loving. Yeah. Well, and this is all specialty grade coffee. Even mm -hmm. our even our bean blend here. 100% arabica. 100% arabica, specialty grade coffee. Um, again, so check the description there for links to any of the care products. Oh, and Coffee Cast. You know, yeah. I forgot to mention that off top because we do a service, right, mm -hmm. where you can schedule a free one on one demo yeah. with one somebody on one like yourself. Demo, uh, it's a Zoom call, so it's face to face. And then we're here in the studio with the machines. Mm -hmm. um, so you can select what machines you're interested in or that maybe you just purchased. And then um, we can kind of give you a demo on those. So, yeah. All right. Well, Missy, thank you so much for taking us through the go, and thank you guys for watching. Again, use those comments if you have questions after the fact, and we'll see you back here soon for more of the best in everything coffee brought to you by Whole Latte Love.